Hello everybody, this is Bert Dixon uh, here presenting on lesson 1.3 from our geometry text. Um, you won't actually need your textbook today. All you'll need is a piece of paper for your notes and uh, we'll work through some examples together. Notes, notes today should be fairly short. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and copy down this first example. Um, we're going to deal with transformations today, which uh, transformations are functions that um, move points in the coordinate plane. So um, this this function here, for example, tells us that if we start with a point x, y, it's going to move to a new location at x minus 4, y minus 3. And uh, so we're going to plot the transformation of this graph, um, this graph ABC, the triangle ABC, and see what happens to the triangle. Okay, uh, so according to this transformation, the um, pre-image, which is these are our original points, and the image gives us our new points. Okay, so according to this transformation, we take the x-coordinate and we subtract 4 from it. So uh, our x-coordinate is 0, so if we subtract 4, that would give us negative 4. And then we take the y-coordinate and we subtract 3. So our y-coordinate is 4. If we subtract 3, we get 1. Point B, uh, again, we're subtracting 4 from the x-value, so that would be negative 1. And we're subtracting 3 from the y-value, that would be negative 3. So go ahead and uh, see if you can figure out where, what is the image of point C. So if you subtract 4 from the x-coordinate, you should get negative 4. And if you subtract 3 from the y-coordinate, you should get negative 3. So now we'll go ahead and plot our image points. Negative 4, 1 is here. So uh, we'll call that point A prime to indicate that it's the image of A. Point B ended up at negative 1, negative 3. That would be here, so we'll call that point B prime. And point C is at negative 4, negative 3. We'll call that point C prime. And so now if we connect those points, we can see that we get this triangle, which looks identical to the original triangle. Notice that if I select these, I can move it right on top. It's the same triangle. And so it is, um, all we did is simply slide this triangle over. We didn't change the size or the shape or the orientation. All we did is slide it. And so when we slide an image, that's called a translation. Okay, so we'll say this is a translation of triangle ABC left, uh, let's see, we want left four units, and up, or sorry, down uh, three units. Okay, so that describes the type of transformation. So remember, a trend, for a translation, we're just sliding the image. We're not changing the size or the shape or the orientation. <clears throat> okay, now I'd like you to try example two. Uh, for this transformation, the point x, y becomes negative x, y. So that means the x coordinate is going to be the opposite, and the y coordinate is going to stay the same. So go ahead and pause your video, see if you can fill in your three image points, and then plot the new figure, and then see if you can write a description of what happened. Okay, so pause your video and then press play when you're ready to see the solution. All right, so point uh, four three ends up at positive four three. Uh, S ends up at positive 1, 3, and t ends up at positive 4, 1. And so now when we plot those points, 
we end up with, uh, here, let me actually slide this down just a hair so it lines up with my grid. Okay, so now um, R prime is at 4, 3. S prime is at 1, 3. And T prime is at 4, 1. And so our new figure looks like this. And the way we would describe it, this is called a reflection across the y-axis. Okay, and we have one more example. This time, um, our function takes the point x, y, and multiplies the x by 2 and the y by 2 to get the image point. Okay, so again, pause your video, uh, try this one out, and see if you can write a description, and then um, press play when you're ready to see the solution. So if we double the x coordinates and the y coordinates, this uh, point P becomes 2, 2, and Q becomes negative 2, 2, and R becomes 2, 6. And so if we plot those points, 2, 2, so this was originally P, Q, R, and now we get P prime. Uh, Q prime is going to be at uh, negative 2, 2. So here's Q prime. And then R prime is 2, 6. Okay, and so it looks like our figure is twice as big as the original. Um, and when we enlarge a figure like that, that's uh, called if we're if we're enlarging both in the um, by the same proportion in all directions, that's called a di a dilation. So this is a dilation by a factor of two. What that means is enlarged to twice the original size. Okay, so now that completes our um, three examples. Now we're, we're going to look at some more terminology. Um, so there are different types of transformations, as we saw in example one, two, and three. We had uh, the first example, uh, we had a translation, which slides the figure. It didn't turn it or anything like that. We had a reflection for the second example that gave us a figure of the same size and shape, but changed the orientation. And then the last one, uh, this one did change the size. Uh, the orientation still stays the same, but the size changed. Okay, so we have lots of different types of transformations. These aren't the only three. Um, we do have other transformations that we'll look at. And so what we want to do is classify our transformations. Um, when a transformation is rigid, then that means it preserves distance, preserves angle measure, preserves betweenness, and preserves linearity and preserves parallelism, okay? So let me just go through each of those together. Um, so preserving distance, that means if you have um, in one figure, you have a um, fine segment that's three units long. So let's say AB, and then it gets uh, maybe moved and flipped or something like that. And the image ends up here, A prime, B prime. So the length of AB here is three. 
the length of a prime b prime is also three so that means distance was preserved okay so if all lengths remain the same then uh, we say distance is preserved okay um, now angle measure we haven't really um, talked about the the angles in any of these previous problems but if i had an angle let's say um, angle cab was uh, let's say 35 degrees and then in the transformation I end up with point C prime here and that is still 35 degrees then that angle measure was preserved and so we have a transformation and all the angles are exactly the same in the image as they were in the original figure and we say that uh, angle measure was preserved okay now between this that might be a kind of a new term for you so what that means is if one point is between two others on the original figure so let's say i have a b and c point b is between a and c so that means if this we do some kind of a transformation that ends up over here where we have a prime b prime and c prime then b is between a and c b prime is between a prime and c prime so in that case between this was preserved however if this if point c ended up here and point b ended up here uh, or b prime and c prime then in this case between this would not be preserved because b used to be between a and c but in the image b is not between a prime and c prime and so um, that's called preserving betweenness okay if, uh, one point is between two others on the original figure, then the image of that point has to be between the uh, image of the other two points in the new figure. Okay, uh, collinearity, uh, I can use the same diagram that I had here um, with A prime, B prime, and C prime. So collinearity means um, points that line up with one another, in other words, they're all on the same line, will also be collinear in the new figure okay so in this figure here in this figure a b and c are all collinear in fact i can put more points on there uh, i can put uh, d here okay a b c and d are collinear that means they are all lined up with one another they are all on the same line and so if the transformation preserves collinearity then a prime b prime c prime and d prime would still be lined up with one another okay so that would be an example in this in this example collinearity is preserved but let's say in my image let's say it bends the line and now i have a b a prime b prime d prime and c prime Okay. In the original figure, A, B, C, and D are collinear. In this figure, they are not collinear. They are not lined up. And so that one would not preserve collinearity. Okay. Um, and then the last one is preserving parallelism. So parallelism says that if we have, let's say we have two parallel lines, L and M, Um, if those lines are parallel, then under the transformation, let's say they end up like this, L prime and M prime. Um, if the original lines are parallel, then in the image, they should be parallel as well. And if that happens, we say that parallelism is preserved. Okay, so when all five of these things happen, we get a rigid function, or we call it a rigid uh, transformation. Okay, so not all transformations do this. And so what I would like you to do now is look back through the three examples that we did. Example one, example two, and example three, and decide, is it a rigid transformation or not? Okay. Is one a rigid transformation? Is two a rigid transformation? Is three a rigid transformation? And if you uh, say that it's not, tell me which one of these 
five conditions was not met. Because if any one of them fails, then we know we do not have a rigid transformation, okay? So take a minute, pause your video, inspect examples one, two, and three, and decide, are any of them rigid transformations? Okay, looking at example one, um, it looks like links are preserved. That length and that length, those are both three. These lengths are both four, okay? Uh, so it looks like distances are preserved. Angles look like they're preserved. That angle and that angle are the same. That's a right angle and that's a right angle and so on. Um, we don't have any uh, parallel lines or anything like that, but we could say if we had some more points on here, like. C and D are actually different letters, uh, let's say D and F, then over here, those points would still be in a line. So um, betweenness and collinearity would be preserved. So this one is a rigid transformation. Okay, all the conditions are met. Um, think of rigid this way. Do you get exactly the same figure? Okay, are the figures um, do they match up perfectly with one another in terms of size and shape? Okay, so that is a rigid transformation. Okay, let's look at example two. In this one, we have the same exact triangle that we started with. It's just been flipped. Okay, so the size and shape did not change. All that changed is the orientation, but orientation is not a requirement for rigid transformations. So this one is a rigid transformation for the same reason that the first one is. All the angles all the lengths um, between this, all that is preserved. So this one is rigid. Okay, so transformations are, sorry, translations are rigid, reflections are rigid, and in this one, uh, this one fails to be rigid. This is not rigid, and the reason why it's not is because distances were not preserved. This distance was two, but in the new figure, it's four. This distance here is two, and this one it's four. Okay, so distances were not preserved, so not rigid because distance was not preserved. For example, QP is not equal to Q prime P prime. The length of QP is not the same as the length of Q prime P prime. Remember, when we don't put a bar on top, that means we're talking about a length. It represents a number, and those two numbers are not equal. This one was two, and this one was four, and so those are not equal. Okay, so uh, we have seen that translations are rigid. Reflections are rigid, but dilations are not rigid, okay? And again, we do have other transformations that we're going to look at, but uh, this is just giving you three examples of how to apply transformations and determine if they are rigid or not. And so that completes today's lesson. Uh, you can go ahead and do your uh, homework assignment for 1.3 now and uh, rewatch the video if you need, if you need to and see me in office hours if you need some help. Have a great day.